happening now. Ivanka Trump under oath testifying in the civil fraud trial against the Trump Organization. We have a new update on what she just said on the stand. And when it comes to abortion rights, the message from voters after last night, can you hear me now? The seventh consecutive election where attempts to further restrict abortion access have been rejected since the Supreme Court stepped in. And tonight we're down to five. Five Republican presidential candidates are going to face off on the debate stage in Miami. Trump, the front runner, skipping out once again to take the spotlight elsewhere, just down the street, by the way. I'm Sarah Seiden with Kate Baldwin and John Berman. This is CNN Central. All right, happening now at this moment, Ivanka Trump is on the witness stand in a New York courtroom. She's been there for nearly an hour or so, testifying in the civil fraud trial against her father and the family business. Now, she is no longer a defendant herself in this case, but she is clearly important to the state's case as she is their final witness. We have new information about what she is being asked and how she is answering. Let's get right to CNN's chief legal affairs correspondent, Paula Reed. So what's happening now, Paula? Well, John, so far this appearance has been quite a contrast to her father's appearance on the witness stand earlier this week, which was quite a combative and chaotic. Now, the questions have focused on her time at the Trump Organization. She left the family business in 2017 when she went to the White House, but the government has been asking her questions about specific projects that she worked on while she was there. They've been focused, for example, on the old post office building here in Washington, D.C., which was converted into a hotel. That was a project that she worked on. And she said that, yes, she did profit from its eventual sale in 2022. She did not disclose how much she made, but we've previously reported it was around $4 million. But they've also been asking her about other projects like the Doral Resort and Spa down in Florida. And they are especially interested in how financing was secured for these properties, her role in that, because it really gets to the heart of the case, specifically loans that were received from Deutsche Bank. And these loans had quite favorable terms. They were granted uh, those kinds of loans based on Trump's purported net worth. And that gets to the heart of this case. Uh, the allegation that he did not accurately represent uh, the value of his assets to get more favorable terms on loans and from insurance companies. So, so far, the questioning uh, it has been very civilized. It has been very technical. That's pretty much what we expected from this witness. As you said, Ivanka is no longer a co-defendant in this case, but the attorney general's office has been seeking to secure her testimony, even though she's tried several different times to get out of making this appearance. Before today's proceedings got underway, the attorney general addressed cameras to talk about why they wanted to hear from Ivanka. Let's take a listen. We uncovered the scheme, um, and she benefited from it personally. Um, and um, Ms. Uh, Trump will do all that she can to try uh, to separate herself from this corporation. But she's inextricably tied to the Trump Organization um, and to these properties uh, that she helped secure financing for. Um, so you cannot hide from the truth, and the facts will belie um, the truth. and and the evidence. Now, no cameras in the courtroom while Ivanka is testifying, but we have our colleagues in the courtroom giving us live updates about what she says. She is expected to be the prosecution's last witness in this case. All right, keep us posted. Again, she is on the stand right now. You'll keep bringing us more information as this testimony develops. Paula Reed, thank you. Sarah? All right, let's continue this conversation now with former assistant special Watergate prosecutor mm -hmm. Nick Ackerman. He's also the former assistant okay. U.S. attorney for the Southern <sighs> District of New York. Okay, we watched Ivanka Trump walk in like she owned the place. Right. She's now on the stand, a very different moment. Most people get very nervous uh, when you're sitting there and having to be questioned under oath. I, I am curious, she's the fourth member of the of the Trump family to, to testify. What are they going to try to get out of her? Because she is not, in this case, she was taken out of this case as a defendant. Well, she does add some important elements here. For example, she was the principal person for the Trump Organization that did the negotiations for the old post office building that was turned into that hotel 
uh, that uh, Donald Trump used to house various foreign diplomats to get lots of money for himself while he was president. Mm -hmm. But what she really did was, in negotiating with Deutsche Bank for the loan, a $170 million loan, it was very clear that Deutsche Bank wanted personal financial statements from Donald Trump, not only to make the $170 million loan, but to keep it going all of those years. And the reason is obvious. Donald Trump filed for bankruptcy six different times. Right. And what it does is it undercuts his testimony last week that the banks really didn't care. They clearly mm -hmm. cared. And if the AG is careful, they will delineate all of those conversations about how important those financial statements were to getting that $170 million loan. Can you give us sort of an overview of what hangs in the balance here? Because we're hearing all these details. You're seeing all these family members come up. You're seeing the contention between Donald Trump and the judge, the lawyer, his lawyer, and the judge. But ultimately, this is over fines, right, and money, correct? Lots of money, at least $200. 50 million dollars the AG is trying to receive. Uh, and basically at this point, Donald Trump is toast. I mean, he is basically going to be found to be a liar by the judge here. What people haven't focused on is not just his testimony last week, right. but it's also the testimony he gave in his deposition where he took the Fifth Amendment over 400 times. Now, what does it mean to take the Fifth Amendment? It means that you are refusing to answer a question because a truthful answer would tend to be incriminating. Then what did Donald Trump do last week? He went into court and said, oh, I didn't do anything fraudulent. I wasn't involved in a fraud, which is just the opposite of what, in effect, he was saying when he took the Fifth Amendment in his deposition. So you've got contradictory testimony. You can use his assertion of the Fifth Amendment against him uh, to basically find that he's lying, that he's manipulating the system when he goes in, refuses to answer questions, answers the questions in a half-baked manner. I just don't see how this judge, at the end of the day, is not going to find that with respect to Donald Trump, liar, liar, pants on fire. I knew you were going to say that, and that is where we're going to end it here. <laughs> we're going back to elementary school, but it is elemental. There yes. are things that you're either telling the truth or you're not on the stand right. uh, or in a deposition. And we should mention, you know, everybody has the right to the fifth to, to plead the fifth, but this is a civil trial, not a criminal trial. Correct. That can get you in trouble in, in the civil trial as opposed to a criminal well, trial. Well, particularly when you take an opposite position. Right. I have been practicing civil law for well over 40 years. I have had a number of defendants take the Fifth Amendment. I have never seen anybody do such a stupid move as to suddenly start testifying after, after you've, you've taken, taken the, the fifth. fifth. Yeah, very unusual move. Nick Ackerman, thank you. It's always nice to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right.